Thanks for stopping by to check out my latest video. I'm actually planning on publishing several videos related to some of these things here, including this video about deploying 500 sites for free. And upcoming videos will be about the PineGrow web editor and also a little bit with Figma and using it with Netlify. So in this video, we'll be looking at the Netlify.com website and cloud services and how easy it is to set up and how it integrates with GitHub. And then a little bit later, we'll take a look at using it with PineGrow and how PineGrow can publish its content to a Netlify site really easy. And also, as I mentioned, Netlify does give you 500 sites for free. It says right on their website and other websites also. If you haven't used Netlify, watch the video and you can see how easy it is to help you get your content published out to the web. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So I've pulled up a web page here, Netlify.com just to show what their homepage looks like and also take a look at their pricing model, which talks about the 500 free websites. Netlify is a really great tool. I've used it for publishing React applications and static applications and other types of applications in the past. I just really like it a lot. I like how it integrates with all these other cloud tools. So here are some of the main points of the Netlify. Unify your content, deploy faster. The Netlify core is a front end cloud solution for developers to build and deploy future proof digital solutions with modern composable tooling that works with all modern frameworks. And as we'll see, we'll also be publishing static HTML pages if you were building that type of a website or prototypes or other types of applications We'll take a look at some of that in a future upcoming video. And the Netlify Create, you can click edit and publish. It's really easy. And we're gonna take a look at that here momentarily in the video. Lots of companies are using the Netlify. Here we can see there's 35 million plus websites deployed on Netlify. That number has been going up quite a lot over the last year or two. 4 million developers, 99.99% uptime SLA. So let's take a look at the pricing page real quick. If we scroll down here, we can see the starter plan, which is what I'll be showing in this video. You can start for free. There's a couple different ways to get your account set up. It includes 100 gigabyte of bandwidth for free, live site previews with collaboration UI, which is kind of nice. The 300 build minutes, and that can last for a while, again, depending on what you're trying to do. Instant rollbacks, if you don't like what you published, you can roll back to the previous version with a click of a mouse button. There's also other add-ons, and if we just scroll down a little more, we can see more details about the starter plan. So here we see it's limited to one free member with free and unlimited Git contributors. The reviewers are unlimited. So what is a reviewer? Reviewers are people who can provide feedback with collaborative deploy previews. And we can take a look at that also. Concurrent builds is one there's the bandwidth, 100 gigabyte per month. And the build minutes is 300. The time it takes Netlify to build your site, to run site generators, compile JavaScript, and perform other tasks. And here is the 500 sites. The number of your websites that Netlify will support. 500. So I think that's really awesome. Depending on what you're, you know, trying to do with your websites, but just having the flexibility and knowing that they allow you to deploy lots of different websites is really awesome. 
So there is the pricing. Let's go ahead and go into the team overview, which this is my Netlify account. And there's some pretty cool things they do here. When you first start up your account, this is a brand new account I created for the purposes of this video. And I did go ahead and publish one of their templates and we'll go ahead and publish another template here in a minute. But another thing that I like when you first set up your Netlify account is they have this wizard right here. And so I customized it, the site name, because it automatically gives your site a name. And so I called it right here, Scott's Design YT Blog. And that's what this site is. It's like a YouTube or a blog. And set up a continuous deployment. So when you first set up your Netlify, it has a wizard and it asks you a few basic questions and I connected it to a Git provider, which I actually have open here. So if you don't have a GitHub account, you can get one of those for free also. And this right here at the bottom of the list was the Next.js blog theme. That's the same thing that you see here. The Next.js blog theme, I deployed that from a template. So I deployed it into my GitHub repository. So now if we wanted to go to that code, we could click on it here and we could go into one of the pages and make some changes right here in GitHub as an example, or you could use like VS code or whatever your editor is and make your change. And then Netlify will build it for you automatically and put it into a preview build depending on your settings. So it's again free to get a GitHub account. You just need an email address and then you can link it to your Netlify. What are the other steps here? There are seven steps. Learn how deploy works. View the deploy summary. You can check that out. View your site. So there's a link to view your published site. There's lots of different plugins. That would take a forever to talk about all those. Set up a build hook if you had the need to do that. And so it walks you through that. And if you don't want to see this, you can just dismiss it from this page. But let's go ahead and click on a couple of their links here to see. Right here they say deploy again. When you deploy, Netlify will automatically build and publish your site. Push a code change to your new site, then check out your deploy logs. Need some inspiration? Add a favicon or add a contact form to your site. So it's nice how they have these things if you're new to Netlify. And what we have here is a basic team overview, which is the page that I'm on here. And we can see I just have one site on the starter plan and there's one team member myself. So we can click on this site and go into this site. And we can see right here it was published at 11.11 today. If you want to set up a custom domain name you can either buy a don domain name or set up a domain name that you already own. So here, like you could put in your domain name and then verify it. That would be in your DNS settings. We're not going to do that in this video. So let's go back. We can see here the site configuration. I'll go ahead and click on that. And then we can see some more detailed information here about this site, which was again a template site that I used from Netlify. The build and deploy, when I originally set this up, it asked me how I wanted to link some code and I told it GitHub. So I used the repository that I showed here. So that is basically the same address as this address that you see here. And just scrolling through some of the other screens here. A 
lots of different settings. Don't plan on changing these for this video. Environment variables are important, like if you're hosting applications and you want to have information securely stored. I don't have any variables, as it says here. There's none set for this site. Do your basic settings for your Netlify site. Let's go back to the site overview. And then we'll go back to the main page or team site. And now we'll go ahead and walk you through the process of adding a new site. So this button here, we can say add new site. Start from a template. We'll do that again just because it's faster and easier. Or you could deploy manually or import an existing project from GitHub or wherever it's hosted. But let's go ahead and start from a template. So we'll go ahead and choose this Gatsby e-commerce theme. A customizable e-commerce theme handcrafted by the Matter Design Agency. I'll just go ahead and click on it here and it says use template. And from this screen it says clone this template to your Git provider. Well it already is hooked up to my GitHub so let's go ahead and click this deploy with GitHub. And there it already knew so it kind of skipped by the screen. If it was your first time setting it up you will have to possibly check a couple settings and then click OK. But since it already knows that I'm connected to my GitHub repository, I didn't need to do anything extra here. So here it wants to know what team. I said just put it on the Scott's Design YT team. And what do you want to call it? We'll just go ahead and leave it as the same repository name where it's being pulled from. And I'll go ahead and leave the repository to be public. If you wanted to be private, you could select private there. But in this case, I will keep it at public. So we just clicked really a couple things here and now let's go ahead and click on deploy site. So here it's going to the deployment page and depending on the speed of the services, it can take just a little bit. So I'll come back in a moment. All right, now it's going on to the next phase here. If you scroll up a little bit, you'll see the building phase here and it shows that it is in progress. It completed the initialization and I'll come back when it's finished. It does use, I believe, slightly slower backend servers or processes when you're on the free account. All right, so there it finished. So from here, we can look at our deployment summary. It says all files are uploaded. All the rules were processed. The essential Gatsby build plugin ran successfully. And the build time was two minutes and one second. So we'll check that against our 300 minutes. And you scroll on a little bit more, you can see the deployment log, everything's completed. You can also scroll down a little further here and deploy the file browser and you can browse your files that's 193 files so let's go ahead and click on that and here you can see basically what it just did behind the scenes it built all of these files and folders for us which is quite a lot pretty amazing and then you can download them if you were doing some debugging sometimes you can do this use this file browser and you can like download the files and look at them so you can see exactly what it did in the cloud hosting environment that can be useful you can either preview it from here by clicking this button or we're going to come back up here and look at the top we can see open production deployment or there's other options you can retry it or clear the cache and retry with the latest branch commit from your GitHub repo. You can also go to your deployment settings, but for right now we'll just open production deployment and we'll give it a second to load. So there is the website. Let's go ahead and click through it.
So there you go. It built a really nice looking website and deployed it all with a few mouse clicks. Pretty amazing. I close the sample application and now let's go back here to the left menu and click on site configuration. And this looks similar to the other site that we looked at. And if we go to the site overview, like back up at the top part of it, here you can see the name that it gave the site. And if you want to change it, you can go ahead and change that name of the site to whatever you want. As long as it's not been used, you can click right here, change site name, and then you can put in whatever you want there and then save it. And as you see at the end of it is .netlify.app. So it will have that type of a name unless you customize the DNS name, which we looked at that before. And let's go back up to the very top. So if I click here, Scott's Design YT. Now we can see we have these two sites here and it's nice that it gives you a preview. If there's a problem with the building, it will show not the website here, but like an error message. You may not be able to read it exactly, but you'll see that it doesn't show what you're expecting. So that can also be a quick clue that something didn't go right. You can also see your builds here. I've just done two for this video. The first one for this site and the second one that you just saw. And so we can see right here, bandwidth, it says it took 339 kilobytes out of 100 gigabytes and build minutes, it says, was one out of 300. I think that should be updated here. In fact, let's just go ahead and hit refresh and let's see if that updates at all. And let's go ahead and click into it. And here it does say two minutes for today. And that will count towards your 300 build minutes that you get for free. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, the integrations, there's all kinds of different integrations here that you can use with Netlify. The list just goes on. I've used some of these in other projects. Cloudinary is really awesome. Contentful. Mailgun. If you wanted the Netlify identity to manage your signups, logins, passwords, recovery, and more, all without rolling your own authentication service, you can enable that. Anyway, there's just a lot of great stuff here. You should look through it if you're curious about what they offer and here is the domain page configure your existing domain to use Netlify DNS or purchase one right here and they'll set it up for you and they do have really good documentation about all this type of stuff if you had an existing domain you could put it in there and then you have to go through a verify process Let's go back to our GitHub for a moment. Go back up to the top. We'll click on repositories. And here you can see the Gatsby e-commerce theme that we just published. So it put the code right here. If I click into it, we can see the code the SRC folder and all of the things that it built for us from that template. So it's really awesome to look through all this. And again, if you wanted to make a change in here and then publish it, Netlify will rebuild your 
domain for you. Now let's go ahead and make a quick change in the GitHub repository for this home page here. It says discover autumn winter 2021. Let's change that to 2023 and then save the change and we'll come back and look at Netlify and see what happens here. There's an edit button here. If you don't want to use your local editor and just had a quick change to make, you could do it this way for the purposes of this video to keep it simple. I don't want to open up a code editor, so I'll make the change right here. So I change it to, let's say, Scott says, discover autumn winter 2023. And then up here in the upper right, I'll go ahead and click on commit changes. Scott updated this page for a YouTube video. Thanks for watching and subscribing. With a smiley face. Now let's go ahead and commit directly to the main branch, which again, for the purposes of keeping this video simple, we'll do that. But you could create a pull request and go through that whole process. Like if someone else was going to review your code and they needed to look at it and or test it. But in this case, we're going to commit right to the main branch. So let's go ahead and do that. So I popped back over to the site overview that we were just looking at and you can see right here it says it's building let's scroll back up and we'll go ahead and let this finish while it's finishing i want to point out here the 7d 869be and if we compare that to here, we can see the same 7D869BE. So it knows that we made that change in the code. And if I click on that, it will go ahead and take us to the changes that we made. And we can see, it says I made these changes two minutes ago, and you can see exactly what I changed. And that's the commit number. Let's see if it finished. Let's scroll down. Okay, it looks to me like it's finished. Let's browse our files. So here I used the browse feature that we looked at and I opened up, well first I downloaded the file here on the right and you can see right here inside of the code, it does show my change. Scott says discover autumn winter 2023. So it is in the file. And let's go ahead and look at the deployed site. We can preview it here. Let's click on that. And you can see right here, Scott says discover autumn winter 2023. So there we go. We saw the full loop of making a change in the backend code repository, saving it and publishing it and seeing a couple different ways to verify that it's working on our deployment and on our production site. Let's go back to Netlify, go to the site overview. And here we can see just momentarily ago, it published the new site. And here we can click on open production deployment instead of the test site. And there again, if we look at the name of the website, it's there. And there's my changes. So the last thing I'll do is I'll change the name of the site right here to change site name. Let's call it Scott's 
shopping site, YT. And so there's the URL. Let's go ahead and save it. And now notice here, configuration, it changes there. And if we go back to the site overview, and we can click on the review the site by clicking this link here. There's several different places you can get to this. You can click it as a favorite site if you want to. But let's go ahead and click on Scott's Shopping Site yt.netlify.app. And as you can see in the URL, it's changed the URL now for getting to this application. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found something useful in it. I appreciate you stopping by and checking it out. I will be publishing several other videos where I target the netlify.com website and the same account using Pinegrow first and then I will get into a little bit with Figma and deploying some code from there into Netlify. Have a great day. If you like this channel please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.